So we asked the internet, can the Cavaliers duplicate last night's performance in New York uh, in the upcoming game three? We had 392 votes. 84% of our chat says yes. 16% says no. Oh, what a shocker that 82% of Cleveland Cavs fans think the Cavs can do it again in game three. Of course they can. Will they? I don't know. But let's let's wrap up our Cavs conversation with this, guys. The G, you asked a good question about the rotation, right? We know the big four is going to play. We know Karis Levert is going to play. Okay, that's five guys. If you're going to have a seven-man rota rotation, that leaves you with two spots for the other guys. The options are, I guess, Ricky Rubio, Isaac Okoro, Danny Green, and Jetty Osmond. If you're going to play two of those four guys, and it may change from series to series if they move on or whatever, but right now, based on what you know and the situation that they're in, if you, who are those, of those four guys for those other two spots, if you're going to play two of them, who are you playing? Green and uh, Jetty. You got green. I got green for sure. Yeah. I pick Jetty because Jetty can give me that energy. Like, when he just is on the court, First of all, he can hit a three at a higher rate. He does hit trades. And, yeah. he and, hit and, he's, and he, he showed me a little something when they had him on Jalen Brunson. He did not embarrass himself. Yeah. He can get out in the break and finish. He gives you energy. He dives on the floor. I think he, he he's a, a more – he's a player you have to care about more offensively than Isaac Okoro. I think that's all true. Uh, it's tough. <laughs> Here's what I would say, guys. I mean, because I'm with I'm, he ain't wrong. You know? Right. Like, that's right, exactly right. You're 100, 100 right. correct. The only thing. I, here's the question. If you're in like a part of me says, well, obviously, I think we're all agreement that Danny Green should get some minutes yes. in all these games. Right. And but my thought is. If, if you're in a big, let's say it's last you're up 110 109 at the end of the game. Part of me says, well, at that spot, I might want to bring in Isaac Okoro to right. play some defense. However, if he's not playing the whole game and he's not completely healthy, is he capable of playing that lockdown defense in that big spot if he's rusty, lacking confidence, and not totally healthy? So I don't know. So I would lean towards Jetty, although he was like the only cab that didn't shoot particularly well yesterday. Mm -hmm. I do think you make a good point, though. Like, Jetty's not great. But the other team has to at least think about him yeah, a little bit. Like, yeah. It has to be there, at least. With got, Coro, if, you're not eating. If he no had the three-point line, you, you bet it be. You have right. to close out. Yeah. Like, you're not panicking. The Jetty not close three, out. But at least you got to pay attention. Yeah. With a Coro, they're basically ignoring Yeah, yeah. And, Go ahead. And, yeah. and, and he, defensively, I get what people say. Isaac Coro probably would be one of their better on-the-ball defenders. But, see, it's different now. The way the Cavs is playing. They have two twin towers. They just yeah, and, and so even if they get past Jetty, you still got to see Evan Mobley. Then you still got to see uh, 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 Jared Allen at the top of the or under the basket. So yeah, you can make up from some of the stuff that you may lose defensively by being a good defensive team defense yeah. and the principles that they got. I, I just need off because here's if you don't do that, you you muddy yourself down, and then the Cavs aren't really that deep. So if you make the wrong decision with the sixth or seventh player, yeah. what ends up happening is you start to be like, oh, well, we don't got enough points today. Right. Because that could happen. Like, right. they, they, you know, they needed every bit of Karras's points. Yeah. yeah, they did. They needed was all your, that. Was your question for the rest of the playoffs or for the rest of this series? Uh, that, that, that's a good question. Because I think it does that, change. that matters. Right. Yeah. Let's, yeah. Let's, you're right. I was kind of asking you generally, yeah. but I, I think it is for the series. Okay. For this series, yeah. I think they'll be fine with, with Jetty because, like he said, you always have those twin times. Now, Evan Mobley won't be in the paint because Julius Randle has the threat of shooting threes. Yep. So that pulls Evan out of the paint. But Jared is always going to be down there because they have a true center. Yeah. They go against like Milwaukee where Brooke Lopez is pulling them out the paint because he shoot threes. See, now it becomes a thing. By, the way, a whole I, by the way, I love that. Like, look, if Julius Randle, and I know he can make them, but that's just not what it is. If Julius Randle is going to be shooting threes. Good. Awesome. Yeah. Because guess what? <laughs> Evan, Evan Mobley is going to contest that. Yeah. He's going to contest it without fall, fouling you. He's going to not, you know, foul a jump shooter. And so now that whole six foot, see, you know, he about six, eight, six, nine, six, ten, whatever the case he is. Yeah. 240. That whole weight right. strength is nullified. Right. And he's not getting those guys in tr foul trouble. Yeah. So I'll That's take you point. shooting them jumpers out there. If you and hit them, hit them. By the way, I didn't realize this. I heard this yesterday. It must have been on the broadcast. I don't know if you guys knew this. I didn't know this before last night. 
that Evan Mobley is the youngest player ever to be a finalist for the Defensive Player of the Year. Yeah. Yep. I ever. Know, I didn't know that either. Yep. That, I mean, that's amazing. Hey, I mean, the seal, he, he got a huge seal in yeah. everybody talks about. Like I said, if he, the, when he developed that consistent jumper, his game would be. I, and he got to put on, yeah. obviously, got to put that weight. No doubt. Because that, yeah. he got, yeah. he, they definitely be D boy him a little if bit. He, down yeah. There. If he's going <laughs> to be a really good offensive player, he's got to get stronger. Yeah. And especially like, because we've seen like when they've matched up with these teams that got, that got good big guys. He struggles. Mm-hmm. If if the if the Cavs mess, I'm gonna tell you what the way they played defense yesterday. If the Cavs mess around and find them a lockdown wing, you talking about like Mikael Bridges, bro? <laughs> they they actually could be one of the teams that I would literally say in the playoffs they're that good defensively that they could win a championship no matter how good offensively you are. And they are good offensively. And they're good, and they're good and offensively. If they added a legitimate wing, they'd be even better. Because so, that means uh, that yeah. means you could that means you have two erasers and you have a yeah. long athletic wing that can guard the KDs, the Kawhi Leonard's. Right. They're at that point, that. Yeah, at yeah, that yeah. point, it, it, yeah. it'd be crazy. It'd what, be ridiculous. What would you be willing to give up to get that? <sighs> that's the problem. That's the problem. Man. <laughs> Nothing <laughs> trade. You know, like, like that's it, it's that's the great thing about the NBA. Yeah. Uh, you can't stack it like that. You used that, to. You used to, but what would have to happen would be you'd have to have somebody that was willing to come to your team yeah. that that wanted to win a championship and was going to not take less than it, like the max super max money. I got to look I got to look into the They got to go game. all in this off season too. This is a conversation for after the year because we don't know how long Donovan Mitchell's going to be here. Yeah. So they gotta go they all got to go all in. Got, I, I'm, I'm interested. In, I got to look up the upcoming free agents for this this season. Yeah. Oh, well, that'll be a big know. topic. Go I ahead. I got one question, man, before Girl. we do these ad yeah. reads. Uh, so, first of all, thanks to everybody who joined us last night for the ultimate uh, Cleveland sports show post game show. Me, Anthony, and G. Bush, we had a lot of fun. We look forward to talking to you all Friday. I like it. Uh, something that came up in the post game show. Picture was of Anthony is so funny. He, he, I don't know what I'm doing. It's hilarious. Yeah, exactly. Something that came up in the yeah. post game show. Uh, I think a fan asked a question. Yeah. Of, Should Isaac Okoro be set <clears throat> for the remainder of this series? I, I think it's it's kind of what we we're talking about here. But here's what I'd say about Okoro. And I've been down on Okoro as much as anybody. I don't know what Okoro is health wise. Like, I don't know that. Mm-hmm. Uh, only he knows and probably, you know, in the team. Right. But I'll say this. If. Okoro is healthy enough to play good defense. I would actually still start him Mm -hmm. so he's in the rhythm of the game. I take him out after four, five, six minutes at the most. Keep him in the rhythm of the game because there may be a big spot late in the first half, late in the second half, where if he's healthy and right, I could use him defensively. And I would still play eight (laughs) guys. I'd like split, you know, give a couple minutes to him and a couple of minutes to Jetty. But if I'm going to ask him to do something in a big spot defensively, I can't have him like not play for 46 minutes yeah. and then call him in. So I would keep him in the mix uh, if he's right physically. Yeah. If he's not, then I'm then I'm done with. That's him. where I'm at too. I, yeah. I think you have to keep him in the mix because what people one thing that de- great defense creates offense. Yeah. If you if you get a good we possession, a good steal, yes. that turns into a fast break. No doubt. So that right there is something that he has the ability to do. And on top of that, they got a good score in Jalen Brunson. So if you got a guy who can at least slow him down, because right. it's it's impossible to to completely shut down people in the NBA, like top sure. players in the NBA, yeah. you can't shut them down. So slow them down and limit them. If he can still do that, then uh, you got to keep him in the but, rotation. I, but I think we all agree. There's no way I'm giving him any kind of significant. No, 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 no. I didn't say that. No, I, didn't say that. I mean, I, you, he Evan like you said, said five, six. Yeah, come on. We need some like, offense in there too. He can't play 30. No chance. I don't even want to, you know, to me, the most he should be playing is like 10, 12 minutes <clears throat> max. And, and we got to We got to understand this too. Like every game is its own entity. Like, yes. so you right. can, we can get into this game, game three and somebody get in foul trouble. Then you then you right, have to all, scramble, right, right, right. Or, or somebody's not hitting shots. Then you've got to scramble. Somebody gets hurt. So he, obviously he wants to have his rotation set, but he has to be able to be flexible to, to pick the right lever to push, especially in the heat of battle, which yeah. is the most important thing when you talk about coaching in the playoffs. But I I do believe that besides Levert, besides the big four and Levert, so start you know even though maybe Okoro still starts, I still think. Danny Green should be sixth in minutes on the team. Yes, I, I think I, he I should be in heavy minutes. minutes. And I don't want him to have a ton of minutes. At six, I put it seven because so you put you bring him in for a coral. 
If say Okor is the starter, you bringing him in for well. Because are you? I, I know you bringing Lavert in for. I Okor think at up. the six minute mark, I could bring in Danny Green and Lavert. I could bring them both in. Yeah. Or, or let me. I, I'll so, who you, so who are you sitting now? Well, I, because it's because that's not the question. At, <laughs> oh, you know what? Not at the six minute mark. Okay. But but I would no. I'd bring in Lavert and then, you know. When either Darius uh, or Donovan, Darius or Donovan sits down, then I bring in Danny Green, and then eventually Levert goes to the bench, and then I stick with Danny Green a little longer, and then I put him on the bench, and I and I mostly most of those you know three minutes will go to Levert, followed by Danny Green, mm-hmm. and then Danny Green and Levert will get some you know t- I guess technically some of those guard minutes yeah. too, and a Coro a few maybe a few minutes at the beginning of the game, a couple minutes maybe at the start of the third quarter, and then if I need him in a big spot. And, and we go to the chat real quick. Danielle yeah. says, what about Rubio? Uh, uh, he's out. And uh, Chris K, uh, he replied, Rubio is a li- liability right now. Uh, and he just ain't feeling He's just not himself. He, he's he, and, he, and let me one more. Somebody else uh, threw that in there, too. No Stevens, no Rubio it, it, at this no, point. Uh, <clears throat> what's his name? Dean Wade. Yeah, the reason why Rubio isn't playing, I, I just don't think he he can stay in front of people, no. um, and he he's he's not he's not a prolific you're not a prolific shooter. No. That was never his thing. Yeah, so right. yeah. we'll leave the Cavs talk there. Good hour, Cavs talk, and now it's the noon hour there, Earl. It's-